All right, guys, still Sunday morning. My video just posted uh, beforehand about my feelings about people not judging what you do and what you say, right? There is a time to make a judgment, but not judging people because I feel I have a family that needs to be saved. And how far would you go to save your family? You go to the ends of the earth, right? I have used my channel to minister to my family, to minister to churches, to minister to strangers. You will do whatever it takes to make sure people get saved, right? So this is, um, I'm now waking up. Like I said, I've been working a lot and it catches up to you until you have some time to adjust. So I'm adjusting to a new schedule. But um, this is my time right now that I just want to share. I usually take a time in the morning. Um, sometimes in the morning, if I don't get to it, it's definitely by afternoon or Sunday night, the latest that I have one of the most productive times in my life. And that is my time alone with God. And usually I work on my spiritual self and I look at myself and I, in the mirror first, because that's what we should be doing. Right. Always looking at ourselves in the mirror. I had a situation with one of my sons the other night. And, you know, as a mom, when you have a lot of kids, your decision-making process has to be like right on all the time. Like one of my sons walked out the door to go to church and I was doing a video and I'm like, do I need to stop this in case I don't see him again? Right. Another son said, do you want to go to church with me today? And I'm like, well, today I'm taking some extra time to rest. I need to think about would, if something happened to him, would I regret not going with him? There's a million things always to think about as a mother when you make decisions. So, um, but I do take a time every single Sunday, pretty much, you know, I try when I walk and pray to get my time in with God, I pray and I try to get something in the word, even if it's a verse on my email, something, I try to get in the word on a regular basis, but Sunday's like my day that is my lazy time. And I find it very productive to be lazy in this way. It is my time to dig in more into the word of God, to listen to sermons, to listen to other people with videos and to really redirect my life and be like, okay, where are the areas that I have seen, I need to improve. So I'm going to be talking in the future about a couple areas that hopefully will help women with areas in their life they need to improve and how we can do better as women. So this is a this is a time I am unavailable to anybody pretty much. It's it's my time. I will be very selfish with my time sometimes. I I will be like, okay, this is my time. I do not want to be interrupted. This is just my time. It's blocked off. But for the most part, um, when I don't have that time, you know, blocked off, and I have to have regular times too. I mean, Sunday's my big time. But even during the weekdays, I have to have time to myself. And that is to refuel so I am available to people more. And it's like an oxymoron, right? But the more you feed yourself, the more you give yourself, the more you're better for other people. So when I make a social impact, like a lot of my time is on the bus with people. I have given away food. You know, I have done a lot for homeless people. Um, because these are the type of people I believe, you know, I don't look down at homeless people. These are people who don't just need food, but they need Christ, right? A lot of people are living like this because they don't have Christ. There are Christians on the street and it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be like this. I mean, nobody should be able to just not have a place to live, in my opinion. There should be basic housing for everyone. And then if people are earning a certain amount of money, yeah, buy your luxury home. But we should have a baseline of housing for everyone. So, um, so as I'm on the buses and I'm impacting a lot of people, um, I need my energy to refuel all the time and I believe in giving it back. So I have been blessed immensely in life with so much. So I try to give it back. So like last week I had something re really rewarding happen and I don't say this to boast. I just say it to encourage other people. 
when I had worked at Wendy's uh, a while back, we had, you know, thrown away food at night and I had said, well, let me give it to the homeless people. Right. And so with discretion, I could give certain amount of foods away to people who were in there. Um, what it depended on the manager. One boss was like, yeah, well, we don't want the squirrels to come back. Other people were like, yes, we don't want to just throw food away, give it to them. So I try to pay things forward. And that's because so much has been given to me, like I said. And, um, so, you know, I had this couple come in and I said, let me, you know, are you having breakfast? And they're like, no, we're just having coffee. And I saw their cart outside and I said, well, let me buy you breakfast with this coupon you have. And so they were so thankful. And, you know, it is better to give in many instances than to take, they say, right? So as long as you are taking care of you with whatever resources you have or can use, you want to give back. And I give back like the shirt off my back. That's how much I give back. And I'll tell you, when I gave, I was so rewarded because this man who was kind of hesitant at first, I felt like it was a little bit of pride. He didn't want to take something, you know, for charity, but he um, accepted what I wanted to do for him. And he was so thankful. I mean, so thankful just for something to eat. And this is where we are rewarded, right? When we see people who have very little and they just are so appreciative and you have other people, you know, you can do things for and they just, they don't appreciate you at all. Right. But you have people who are just like, thank you so much just for a piece of food. And so, um, this is where I grow too. I have a gift of giving. I love to give. I really do. I, I love to give. Um, we want to be careful though. I was watching a Caleb Hammer show where this mother just kept giving and giving to her kids at her own suffering. I mean, I've never seen a woman so bad off with every single loan taken out, every single credit card, every single thing. That was like her, her job of just taking out a bunch of debt. And in the end, she pretty much couldn't pay it. I mean, it was like 22 years of paying off debt if she happened to be able to get another job. And I don't feel bad for her because this is a woman who makes a ton of money, like over a hundred thousand a year, and she just blows it on everything. So I have no sympathy for her. And I don't know what her issue is with giving so much to her kids. I mean, I think a lot of times it's guilt. A lot of parents will be like, okay, let me give you money because I feel guilty I wasn't there for you during the younger years. So let me make it up, you know, make it up to you now. I feel like I'm working a lot and I like to give and, you know, my son just had a birthday and another one had a birthday and I love to give. Not out of guilt because, you know, I was there for my sons all the way up, but because I just love to give and love to be there and care for other people. So um, where my husband was like, oh, she left me homeless in my truck. I've had other people be like, Melissa, we know you're not like that. We know it. We know you. People from high school, you know, we know you're not like that. So that qu didn't quite work, that lie. And when we look at a crisis, we should be able to look at a trial and say, is this going to bring us closer to Christ? Or is this going to pull us away from God? Are we going to do things in our own strength? Or are we going to handle it in a way that says, nope, I'm going to trust Christ. I'm going to look at this trial and I'm going to say, okay, there's something that you could work on and I'm going to trust Christ with it. Or do we just go in our own strength and harden our heart and be like, well, this is what I'm going to do and choose a superficial way to handle a trial. That's exactly what my husband did. Instead of letting a trial, one or two trials, make him grow to be more Christ-like, he chose to deal with things in his own strength, with his own devices and his own tools to think that he was going to improve his life. And when you do this without putting Christ in the equation, you're actually hurting yourself. You're actually going backwards, back to your own vomit. You're not moving forward and growing in a right way. So that's how we want to let trials, um, you know, 
shape us in life to be more Christ-like, to be more content, to be more like Christ, right? So, um, so take some time, ladies, to block off time every single day, at least something, you know, when you're walking. Like I said, I have been adjusting my body to really disciplining myself in a million ways to, you know, better my life. Take the time to be with God and then have a huge chunk of time. Like Sundays, I love to just like really focus on my heart and my spiritual side and say, I say I believe in Christ, but what do my actions show? Do I really believe in him? Of course I do. I know I am rooted in him, but do my, what are my actions showing? Is it showing uh, I'm going toward Christ or is it showing I'm going away from him? And I tend to handle things also in my own strength. And that has always been my weak point, always in my life. And it has been very hard for me on many occasions to go to Christ, to say, no, stop going to other people, go to him. And that is probably my, my hardest struggle in my walk with Christ is to go to him. And, um, it's something that we have to do. It's a discipline, just like, uh, you know, your workouts. I was encouraged the other day. I saw someone who we were waiting in line at the plasma center and he was doing push-ups. This was a military guy while we're standing in line, he's doing push-ups. So I'm like, uh, you know, there's no excuse for me not to get on my weights again. You know, if I have five minutes when I come home to change from job to job, I can still get in some weights. You know, it's actually like, I've got like close to an hour when I get home. And I'm like, you can put those weights in right there, Melissa. You don't need to make excuses for yourself that you're too busy. So always take some time. Like every single Sunday, I reset. I'm looking at what can I do better, what to put in my books, how to do this so that I can improve my life. And everybody can do this. You know, everyone can improve their lives if you have the right resources. And, you know, that is by working at it. I never had anybody come to me and say, let me show you how to do this. You know, let me show you how to become a Christian. I had to go find it myself. I was the one who went to church. I was the one who went to classes and I chose to, you know, say, okay, I need more work. My husband left us big adjustment because it wasn't expected. I always worked, uh, off and on when I homeschooled and then in the end we were losing our trailer and my husband was like, you know, the roof was caving in and he's like, I don't want you to work. And I'm like, guess what? Too bad. You've had your opportunities to, you know, help us improve our finances to go get another job or whatever for years. You haven't, the roof is now caving in, in the trailer, literally starting to fall in too bad. You know what? You're not going to be followed anymore because you have proven over and over you are not willing to do what it takes to make things work. So I will be working even more. So that's when I started picking up 40 hours a week. And then when we had the house, it was like a ton of work I was doing. So um, now I'm doing something a little different than most people. And I am working my, you know, I am working my butt off, working a lot of hours just to get that edge and get that six month emergency fund, et cetera. So do something different too. take the time on Sundays to be like, how can I do things different? Like my son was speeding the other day, the one who just got his license. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You think you're invincible with this license? And he's like, well, everyone else speeds. I go, if everyone else jumped off a bridge, like my dad used to tell me, would you? And he says, yes. (laughs) I'm like, you better watch it because you're going to get your license taken away already. So, um, he's my little road runner. He's all over the road within a week of getting his license. He's gone all the time because he loves to uh, drive. And his dad did the same thing when he got his license. He just loved to drive for the very act of just driving where I got my license and I was like, not a big deal, you know, not a big deal. I needed it to get to work. So I don't think I really enjoyed the whole process of getting my license as much as uh, my son has. So, um, yeah, I've got to, you know, 
still my son is, you know, just had a birthday and he's grown up, but it's like, Hey, you're going to get some points off if you don't, you know, slow down. So be there with your kids as not mothering them, but guiding them and saying, Hey, you know, you don't have to learn everything the hard way. I can tell you some things in life. So take your Sundays guys, just to reevaluate, you know, your relationships with your sons your relationships and your, um, you know, your workplace, your goals, take some time to do that. Okay. Thanks for joining me guys.